Hi, I'm Greg Althaus. I'm co-founder and CTO of Reckon. I'm going to talk to you today about digital rebar provision and the provisioner data models. So I've got a system kind of set up and we'll explore the data models that way. Um, this is also in our documentation. So if you look at our data architecture provisioner models, we'll talk about what each model is. Um, I've kind of already got a system installed. You can see on our YouTube DR provision channel, some of the other videos that'll get you to where you can kind of play with these parts. The first model that we work with is what we call the machine model. And there's a CLI to um, view that. Which gives you the ability to map an IP in your environment to a boot environment to install to let that machine boot when it pixie boots. The machine acts also as a holding point or a collector of what we call parameters. They're stored in a profile, and we'll talk about it in a second, associated with the machine itself. And these, profile, these uh, parameters allow you to customize and make changes to templates so that you can alter how things are installed. This could be things like disk drives or passwords or SSH keys. All those kind of things can be embodied and, and used in templates and we'll talk about it in a second. But the idea is the machine is just representing an IP out in your network and what boot environment it should get. And host name and now these parameters as well. And then we have a pro this concept of a profile and again, we also have a CLI for that. And we can say profiles. And then I can list a profile. In this case, I have a global profile and it's empty. But the idea is that the profiles are also places where we can put parameters. And a machine has a list of profiles that it can have associated with it. And the idea is these parameters, which are represented as key object stores, can be used to inject information into these boot environments and their templates. The, the parameters are applied from most specific to least, least specific. So the idea is if there's a parameter on the machine, we'll use it. Then if it's in one of the profiles associated with the machine, we'll use it from that. And then finally, we'll check the global profile to see if it should be applied. So that way you can have like, I want all my nodes to have these SSH, SSH keys, but I want these sets of nodes to have this root password, right? It gives you those kind of levels of abilities. So the main object that the boot environment, the machine is referencing is the boot environment. And this is a lot of times what we're importing and what we're storing and what we're trying to serve. So this is what the prim primarily the provisioner is trying to serve is boot environments. Boot environments are a collection of um, templates that need to be rendered for that boot environment. They are also include the potentially the location of and content that needs to be served to do an install or whatever else needs to be booted. Um, and then it also has a few extra variables that allow it to do things like this is um, only for a known environment or um, it allows you also to query and find out what required parameters or optional parameters are needed for that boot environment. So um, let's look at one real quick. So in your install directory, you'll see an assets directory. And in there, you'll see our provided boot environments and templates. So if you go look at the boot environment, let's go look at, for example, CentOS 7.3. Right? In this case, this is a... Um, since we don't have unknown only, it means that it is a machine specific. The idea is that this is rendered for a machine. If the unknown only variable is set to true, that means it's a ge generic one and can only be used for the unknown to unknown boot environment. The unknown boot environment is for devices that don't have a machine yet, and so this is the boot environment we'll give it. So this is oftentimes like the ignore boot environment, the default one that ships with digital rebar provision, which says ignore everybody, boot from local disk. 
then once you run the load discover script, it adds and sets the unknown prof unknown boot environment to discovery, which says run sledgehammer, right? So in that case, it would run sledgehammer, but the initial discovery has no uh, machine context. It's all just basic information to get the machine added. And then the sledgehammer boot environment, which is a machine specific one, will provide machine specific templates. So in this case, CentOS is a um, machine specific one. And so we can see that it defines an OS section, right? And in this case, it defines a CentOS ISO, um, the checksum for that ISO, where it would be gathered, and what we want to name that in our cache directory. So in the TFTP directory, there will become a CentOS 7.3.16.11 directory that's got the exploded contents of this ISO. Now this section is used by the bootims install part of the CLI to find an ISO of that name. If it can't find that name, it'll then attempt to download that ISO and upload it into digital rebar provision um, and store it at, the, at that location. Okay, You can see that the required parameters and the optional parameters that can be provided, these are helpers mostly to indicate what you could set and what's available. Um, once the ISO has been exploded, you need to specify what the kernel um, what kernel it should boot, um, list the NIDRDs. Now these paths are relative to the exploded ISO that will be under this directory. So for example, if you looked in the ISO, you would see an images pixie boot VM Linux, right? Those are the references in that path. The boot ims are the boot environments that are passed on the kernel boot line along with the NIDRDs. Now you can see we do template expansion. So this allows you to have access and do um, references to things that are variables on the machine or parameters. So in this case, we're getting the machine-specific URL path to the Kickstart file. So in this case, that matches this path here. So machine path is the path in the TFTP directory, the machine URL, is the HTTP access point for that machine path. And you can see we use the Kickstart. So this way the system knows how to download the Kickstart file that is provided here. Then from there we have our templates. A boot env can then serve that kernel and an NIDRDs with those boot parameters, but it also has the additional values that need to be, files that need to be served by the templates. So in this case, we are using, we're providing, requiring four templates for this boot end. And so in this case, we have our kind of almost boilerplate three, the first three that are used by our um, Pixie boot environment. So in this case, we have an iPixie file that represents an iPixie config file that's built. And in this case, it's going to live by the machine's address so that iPixie knows how to find it or we have an ELILO based, which represents our UFI kind of booting systems and how they ask for their config files. And then um, in this case, we have our Pixie Linux based config file that lives under the Pixie Linux config directory based upon the IP address um, of the machine. So those get provided through the TFTP and the HTTP part of the provisioner at this path in the environment as well as we have a template that represents the kickstart file that the kernel is going to attempt to load and it's specified at the machine path which is a machine specific path in TFTP right so that way it's consistently known and the compute ks now these reference templates that need to be uploaded on the template side so when boot install runs it pulls these template files in or tries to find them in the templates directory that's appear with the bootems directory. You can also inline templates. So if I look at, for example, the discovery boot environment, I can see that templates can be in inlined as well. And so in this case, there's no reference to something in the templates directory. It's just all self-contained in a single boot environment. Uh, your choice on how you want to do it. In this case, this one's fairly small, so they're easy to inline and edit. If they're much larger, 
we tend to put them in template files so that you can edit the files and upload them consistently. This is an example of an unknown or a um, only a known boot environment. So this is the one that the nodes get when they boot without a machine and aren't in, in the digital rebar provision. And you can see most they don't actually reference the machine variable because there's not one. That's why they're unknown only or only unknown. Okay, um, so that's the boot environment. And then the templates, which represent kind of the files that are being served outside of just the kernel and the init RDs. And a lot of them live in the templates directory, and we have lots of them. And you can see the, the basic, um, right, the default UFI based ones that get exploded. Um, and then, like I said, the kickstarts are available through here too. Oops. And we'll do another one on templates because there's lots to talk about with regard to templates. But the idea is that these then get pulled in. They have the same um, substitution kind of variable substitution through Golang text template format. Kind of looks like a little bit like um, Jenga 2. And those then get served to the nodes to provide their environment. So those are the, the um, basic objects. Um, in the documentation, you can get more details on all of them. And we'll do another video about templates specifically and what you can do in them and how they get rendered and when they get rendered. Okay. Hopefully you found that useful. And see you next time.